Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansing. Topping our newscast, an official from the Casino Control Commission defended the agency's fiscal year 2016 budget before Senators Monday. The commission's chair said she made changes to the agency that correct a lot of the problems they've been experiencing for years. News 2's Erica Parsons has the story. The chair of the Casino Control Commission defended the fiscal year 2016 budget by herself Monday. Presenting a budget is a necess necessity in this, um, this day and age, and uh, we have been totally transparent and, and open. The Casino Commission salaries and fringe benefits are funded by the central government. This year, the governor's office is recommending an appropriation of $600,000 for personnel and fringe costs. That's a drop of nearly $7,000 less than what they received last year. Commission Chair Violet Golden testified that the department has been without staff and relying on part-time help, which saved on expenses. Golden discovered during her tenure on the board that for more than a decade the agency had been lapsed in reports and collections. We found things that, that should, have been, should have been improved a long time ago. I mean, simple reconciliations of accounts, uh, the, the way we store documents, the way we retain documents, uh, the way we expend public funds, um, persons um, who... who should be serving or not serving in office. The board's recent audits revealed outstanding monies owed to the commission so far of more than $1 million. That includes roughly $270,000 owed by the government. A problem Golden said caused because the Department of Finance commingled casino funds. DV Casino owes almost $500,000, but they haven't gotten the bill yet. The board sits five, but two positions have been vacant for several years, and Golden supports reducing that number to three. Lawmakers questioned why the commission can't fund its own operations, and Golden said that's her goal. I'm willing to accept the Senate's um, request for, for returning those to the general fund when, when necessary, and, that, and that's my pledge. It remains my pledge even through statutory changes for percentages. Erica Parsons, News 2. Some accomplishments the commission made were settling more than 30 outstanding legal cases open since the opening of the St. Croix Casino. They also made significant improvements to the building and office. As we reported, Governor Mapp traveled to Washington, D.C. today to meet with officials of the Department of Transportation. He is accompanied by Acting Commissioner of Public Works, Gustav James. Mapp is also headed to New York later this week for meetings with officials of the New York Police Department and officials of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. We'll keep you updated on any developments in the governor's travels. Senator Kenneth Gittins, chairman of the Senate's Rules and Judiciary Committee, speaks out on the recent series of election reform meetings held between lawmakers and election officials. According to Gittins, there are certain things, certain changes that need to be made, and he says he's determined to realize them by the next election. The public wants and expects its elected representatives to address and fix the problems before the next election, and that is what we intend to do. We spent an inordinate amount of time just focused on the definitions in the title, realizing that too created lots of conflicts that we see today. It is not the taxpayer's responsibility to fund party primaries. Therefore, it's time for our party leadership to get busy and start planning and strategizing its own primary for selection of party candidates. In other news, WAPA crews are still trying to restore power to a small number of businesses in Frenchtown after a trailer truck ran into some telecommunication lines by McDonald's, snapping the utility pole and effectively cutting out power in the area. The pole damage took down feeder 10A at around 1.28 p.m., but WAPA was able to isolate the incident just to that area around 2.16 p.m. when feeder 10A was brought back up. The pole crashed into at least one vehicle that was parked nearby and also destroyed a tree and a lamppost. Meanwhile, WAPA is holding a public meeting on Tuesday, June 23rd on St. Croix to present and discuss an integrated resource plan that has been prepared for the authority by its consultant, Black and Vige. A similar public meeting was held on St. Thomas late last month. The IRP is a study which determines the best generation mix for WAPA over the next two decades. It looks at the current generation to determine generator sizes, types of renewable energy to have WAPA perform at its optimal efficiency and reliability. That's according to Hugo Hodge. It's at 6 p.m. in the theater at UVI St. Croix campus. 
The Virgin Islands Energy Office will be offering two five-day energy audit training sessions for local energy industry professionals by South Face Energy Institute. Trainings will be held in each respective district, St. Thomas. It'll be July 14th to the 18th, UVI on St. Croix, July 20th to the 24th at UVI's RT Park. Uh, basic building science concept, these are the topics, home assessment and improvement concepts, and the use of diagnostic equipment will all be presented. The trainings will consist of a combination of classroom and field activities. Participants that attend the entire course will be eligible for a certificate of completion or attendance. The deadline to register is July 6th. Call 713-8436, extension 3603 for more information. In crime reports, police continued to investigate a homicide. The victim was identified as 32-year-old Roy Henry Jr., also known by the nickname Uncle Roy. At 3.26 a.m. early Sunday morning, the 911 emergency call center received a report of a homicide at the Lime nightclub located in Estate Princess. Officers and detectives arrived to find a male lying in the parking lot. EMTs examined his body for vitals and found no signs of life. Police say information gathered at the scene indicates that he walked out of the nightclub into the parking lot area when unknown individuals began shooting at him. He was struck several times about his body and succumbed to his in injuries. Meanwhile, Roger Kainth, who's the owner and general manager of the Lime nightclub, shared this statement. He said, we've pride ourselves with running a fun and safe venue for more than five years and thank our very capable security team for remaining vigilant to protect the lives of the people who choose to party with us. We thank VIPD for their quick response following the incident. We express condolences to the family and friends of the young man and urge anyone with information to contact police with whatever they know. We have a number of upcoming social events planned as summer continues and do not intend to let a few lawless individuals in the community encroach on the enjoyment of life for others. We plan to continue investigating in top-notch security to create a safe and secure environment inside our establishment. Count on two to keep you updated. At roughly 11.57 p.m. on Wednesday, June 17th, patrol units were dispatched to the Western Resort in reference to a drowning. The victim, Chris Betancourt, an employee of the resort, had been known to go kayaking frequently and had taken to the sea that afternoon. A National Park Ranger at 11.40 p.m. stated that the victim's kayak had been located with no sign of the deceased. The Coast Guard was contacted for assistance, located the body, and made several attempts to retrieve it. Because of difficulty, they had to resume their efforts to retrieve the body on the morning of Thursday, June 18th. And by 9 a.m., the body of the victim had been retrieved. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. As we can see, everything's up there. The Dow, 103, Nasdaq, 36, S&P 500, 12. Coming up on News 2, the 16th annual Kayak for Kids. The fundraiser for Queen Louise Home took to the waters at St. Croix's Cane Bay Beach. More than 60 participants signed up to paddle the course from Cane Bay around Ham's Bluff and finished at Frederickstead Beach. We'll have those highlights. The Charlotte Amali track was a sea of purple, orange, and white on Saturday as hundreds gathered for the American Cancer Society's 2015 Relay for Life. From cancer survivors to supporters to the 80 teams that signed up for the relay, all in attendance, went home with one message, never give up hope. News 2's April Night has highlights. Eight-year-old Kara Henderson said she wasn't too young to become a caregiver for her grandma, Lori. I was Mommy Lori's girl for everything she needed or wanted. I was the one to get it. She died on December 7, 2013, and I miss her very much. Kara's grandmother was one of many cancer patients remembered during the 2015 Relay for Life on St. Thomas, an event that aims to raise funds to support Virgin Islanders still continuing the fight against cancer. We work hard to help those people who need the help, who financially cannot make it, 
and who financially are distressed. Luminaries were lit to honor those who lost the battle. But the spotlight was on cancer survivors. They were given five-star treatment with a lavish dinner. They bore torches in the pitch dark, declaring themselves warriors of hope. I don't feel like I'm battling, I'm victorious. And that's the way I'm putting it out in the universe. I'm not claiming cancer. This year, the St. Thomas Relay drew some 80 teams that contributed to the local American Cancer Society, almost reaching their $248,000 goal for cancer patient support. And the monies are still coming in. Organizers say that for cancer survivors, the annual Relay for Life helps them fight the battle in more ways than one. When they come to us, we give them hope. And that's what it's all about, hope. Reporting for News too, I'm April Knight. And be sure to count on two. We'll let you know how much funds was raised as soon as that information comes in. Well, despite the weather and the power outages that left university, the university running on a generator, dozens of recent graduates turned out for a job fair Monday hosted by the Department of Labor. Fifteen employers were on site. Well, this is the first time we were doing this, uh, tailoring to the high school graduates and college graduates. With the employers we have here now, one of the main things that we have to do is find out what their needs are so we could kind of tailor the job fair to cater to who our employers are. Because remember, the client who are job seekers are not only our clients, the employers are our clients as well. So we want to make sure that we satisfy both entities by having job seekers hired and have employers satisfied at the same time. We do have an array of services, um, career readiness services, as well as resume writing services that we do offer, um, starting with the critique of your resume. We also offer a job readiness workshops to include business editors to include um, workshops, uh, interviewing workshops, and so on and so forth. The Department of Sports, Parks, and Recreation says it's not too late for parents on St. Thomas and St. John to register kids for summer camps. The camps below go on for six weeks, starting June 29th, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Each camp is priced at $100, and they're open to children from 6 to 14. Well, there's a baseball camp for boys at the Joseph Albain Ballpark, softball for girls at Emil Griffith Park, there's cultural camp for boys and girls at Winston Ramo Recreational Center, there's also chair camp for girls at Lockhart Elementary School, at Alvin McBean Complex, there's a sports camp for boys and girls, and outdoor camp for boys and girls at the St. John Rec Center. There's soccer for boys and girls at the Lionel Roberts Stadium, but this only goes from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and it's $50 per week. Go to dspr.vi for registration forms. Senator Marvin Blyden has announced the winners of the first Marvin Blyden Scholarship Program, the scholarship essay contest held recently in connection with a fundraiser honoring four women in the community. From Ivana Dorkin High School, the recipients were Mary Buendia, Rayan Charlery, Jashawn Casimir, and Jaquan Diaz-Hines. From the Shah Lamali High School, Ajayi Pickerings Haynes, Janisa Callwood, Shadea Varlak, and Dijani Cameron. The recipients who were all selected by the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands received $1,000 each. Congratulations to all the students there. If you can sing, dance, act, or do any kind of entertaining, you might be able to work with the Department of Tourism because they're looking for musicians and other performing artists who are willing to entertain visitors. Anyone who is interested should contact any of the department's offices to complete an application and W-9 form. A copy of your business license, sample performances, and rates are also required. Applicants should have flexible schedules and be available to work during the week, weekends, and holidays. Also, St. Croix native George Cannon III is the newest member of the Department of Tourism's New York office. office. Cannon was selected from an extensive pool of qualified candidates to work as the department's summer intern for the public relations firm. Now, in this position, Cannon will act as support for the PR team to pitch the VI to a national audience. Cannon is a recent graduate of Monroe College, where he received a Master of Business Administration. The Queen Louise Home for Children provides children from birth to 12 love and support in a family setting. The 16th annual Kayak for Kids, the fundraiser for Queen Louise Home, took to the waters at St. Croix's Cane Bay Beach. More than 60 participants signed up to paddle the course from Cane Bay around Hams Bluff and finished at Frederickstead Beach. 
Uh, we have some wonderful fathers with us today that we're so grateful that they decided to spend their Father's Day with us. Last year, we made $20,000 from this event. This year, we're hoping to surpass that amount, and it looks like we will. Thank you to the community for always supporting Queen Louise Home for Children. Great events there. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast comes your way next.